I am your host, Stephen Iagostino. For the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to be talking about the biggest news in fight sports. This week, it's UFC 295 at the mecca of the game, Madison Square Garden. Not the main card we wanted with John Jones pulling out, but still a lot of action. Nonetheless, Gary Prochaska will fight Alex Pereira in that main event. And Sergey Pavlovich will take on Tom Aspinall in the co-main for the evening. We'll welcome on Brad Thomas, our resident betting expert, to try and win you some money on that card. But first, get your weekday started with Bet the Edge. Join Jay and Drew Dinzik as they tackle the biggest games from every angle in the NFL, NBA, and more. So whether you're targeting spreads and totals, looking for value in futures markets, or circling player props, Jay and Drew have you covered with new episodes every weekday at 6 a.m. Eastern. Hey, we welcome on uh, my good friend, new, newly newly crowned father, Brad Thomas, our betting an- analyst here at NBC Sports. Brad, how are you doing? And most importantly, how's the little one? How's the family? You know, I'm doing good. Um, I will say that I am tired. You know, everything that everyone talks about uh, not getting any more sleep, that is legitimate. It like either the baby's awake or you are sleeping and the baby's in their uh, bassinet and you're terrified that their baby's not breathing or something. So you're not sleeping because you're just anxious the whole time. But man, like uh, working in the sports industry and being in love with sports, it's way a way better feeling while having a child because I feel like as much sports as I'm consuming um, while taking care of her, she's going to be, you know, kind of soaking that up. And hopefully one day she's into um, into sports the way I am. I was going to say you're you're losing sleep over um, you know much more important reasons now as I'm sure you're, you're used to losing sleep over <laughs> sweating out like West Coast baseball uh, yeah. pay props at like ten o'clock at night or something so uh, much more valid reason to be losing sleep Brad but thanks for taking the time to chat um, possibly another reason for you to lose some sleep at UFC two ninety five that's way past your bedtime now yes. probably on Saturday. Um, huge, huge fight, but you know, a little disappointing. It could have been way bigger this weekend. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I was actually at, uh, the media day, um, you know, yesterday and that was kind of the vibe too, oddly enough. Um, you know, with a lot of the, the media members and the fighters of, of what this could have been with Jones having to pull out last minute, but nonetheless, the fights are happening at the fight Mecca of the world in Madison square garden. Um, and there's plenty to bet on, isn't there, Brad? Dude, there's a lot of bet on, and this is going to be, it doesn't matter, like, and I'm not downplaying the fighters on the card, like, by any means, but it doesn't matter who's on the card when the fights are at MSG, like, it's just a place that erupts, especially for uh, for the co-main and the main, it's just a place that you want to be at, like, you, 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 you want to hear on the television, you want to see fighters win and then call somebody out, uh, call out their next opponent, it's like, it doesn't matter who who's fighting. It's going to be electric. It always, always is electric at MSG. The pressure's oh. on for the fighters. The pressure's on for our betting cards. So um, we're going to thin this out a little bit. We're just going to take a look at the co-main and the main, uh, where as the co-main arguably um, might be the new surprise um, draw here for this card. We have Sergey Pavlovich and Tom Aspinall, two huge powder keg fighters uh, with a ton of KOs to their name. That is our co-main event, Brad. And, and you know, before we get into much more here, let's take a listen to some of the sound we heard yesterday at the media at the media conference uh, with each of these guys. So, first of all, welcome to New York. I know it's a place you always wanted to visit. At this point, does it feel like a different sort of fight week because you had little notice, or now you're here, you're doing all the media, it's just like any old week you're coming into? Uh, it's just like any old week, mate. Um, I've been here a little bit longer this time because I'm used to fighting in London, so I've been here for like um, four days already. Got a little time to chill and um, get used to the time change and stuff, but yeah, regular fight week, mate. You've mentioned how you're going to do a Bisping for this fight. I remember when he fought Rockhold, he said, oh, the lack of notice meant he couldn't overthink it. Are you feeling the same way? Exactly the same. Exactly the same, honestly. Usually, with like a 10-week fight camp, I've got so much time to like... It's like just a massive build-up, whereas this time, especially because I didn't have my visa, that took a lot as well. So I didn't train, didn't have my visa, and I was just scrambling around like last minute, and before you know it, they just throw me into New York, I'm here, I don't even have time to think about the fight, so uh, I think it's working to my advantage so far, but obviously I've not fought yet, so um, we'll see, we'll see, mate, Saturday night. That said, it was pretty obvious this was the guy you were gonna fight 
anyway, right? It seemed like he was the logical next opponent for you. So you've been preparing for him, even if you haven't been in camp, you've been preparing for this guy for a while? No. Oh. So in that case, what are you expecting? You know, everyone's talking about, he's the, you know, very dangerous early on, so are you. So maybe the tactic should be, oh, let's take him into deep waters and see how he does there, or do you rely on your own ability to get them out of there early and just be aggressive from the opening bell? I don't know. I think it's heavyweight MMA. You got to see what happens. Uh, he's a very, very dangerous guy, as am I. And um, yeah, mate, I'm just focused on going in there and enjoying it. Like this is my absolute dream fight in Madison Square Garden, heavyweight title. Pavlovich, like everything is coming together, and I'm just going to go out there, do my thing, and enjoy it. I wasn't preparing really for anybody. I was preparing for yeah, nothing. I was just in the gym training, helping other training partners who's got fights coming up and stuff, so I wasn't really preparing for anybody. I'm fighting the scariest guy in MMA, in my opinion, in the worst circumstances possible without a training camp, but I obviously think I can win. Like, I'm not the kind of guy who shows up for money or who, you know, I, I ain't signing a contract and showing up if I don't think I'm going to win. Like, I truly, truly believe that I can win on Saturday night and that I'm going to win. I'm an absolute winner and I'll find a way to win, no matter what the circumstances. So, um, yeah, the odds are definitely stacked against me and it'll be even better when I, when I win the title on Saturday night. Tom was in here and he said he wasn't really in full camp. He was, you know, helping teammates out and, you know, he wished he had a full camp to prepare for you. So I'm curious, is it an advantage for you knowing that, yes, you weren't preparing to fight Tom specifically, but you were kind of going through a camp to prepare as a backup? You know, I don't think you can take an opponent lightly. I don't think I'm underestimating him in any way. Uh, we, were, we were prepared. We were prepared for anybody. We were prepared really hard. So everything's serious. Everything's 100%. And where do you think you have an advantage in this matchup? And what are the biggest keys for you to get the victory? You know, it doesn't make sense for me to sit here and mince words and tell you what I'm going to do, what I'm not going to do. The only thing I can say is that I'm 100% prepared. I was prepared for the guys that are considered legends in the sport. So the only thing that separates me now is a little bit of time until we get there on Saturday. The cage will close behind me and then we'll see what happens. All right, so both these guys are locked in, ready to go. Uh, seems like this could go to... Um, an early finish, as you, if you look at each of these guys' records and hearing them speak, uh, Brad, what do you look look or what are you looking for in this fight? I'm looking for, I'm looking for the guy who wants it more, right? That's not like, that's not a great statement to say when you're tracking analytics, right? You can't put a number on pride, aspirations. Um, and part of me, you know, if Tom Aspinall has a full camp, like I'm 100% with full confidence betting on Aspinall, but. I think that I still have to bet on Aspinall just because if he can somehow take it to the ground or land the perfect punch, it is his to lose. And why I say that, I know Sergey's a scary, disgusting, crazy fighter, but Aspinall is the more rounded fighter. And he's a fighter who I think has that, he has that ability or the possibility of being the next big thing, the next big champion, the well-rounded game. It, it just doesn't make sense to me um, why, you know, he kind of is downplaying this fight when he doesn't need to go five rounds. He doesn't even need to go three rounds. There's no way that this fight goes three rounds. Sergey's what? Six straight first round finishes. Um, I was looking at going back and looking like Aspinall hasn't got a full fight ever. Like, you just need to be conditioned enough to make it two rounds. Even if you look at the books uh, standpoint from a betting perspective, for the fight to go one full round is plus 105. That means they're giving it about a 45% chance that this fight makes it out of the first round. So leave all your conditioning out of the side, right? Leave him rolling out of bed, getting ready for this fight. All he needs to do is be perfect, in my opinion, for one round. I, I see that money's going against Aspinall, which I, I like Aspinall, and it's going on Sergey, especially after that press conference. Well, so maybe that's like one of those situations, Stephen, where you, you kind of wait, right? Like if you like Sergey, you bet it now um, at the plus price. Uh, there's some plus money out there. Or if you like Aspinall, you wait until uh, probably five minutes, 10 minutes before fight time, and you probably get a plus price on Aspinall. I do really like live betting in this situation, especially with two fighters that um, are coming on short notice. Now, one thing to mention here, Sergey was was training for this fight. He was training 
to be the backup for the main event. And he said that in the presser. He said he was training to fight the, the greatest of all time, whether it was John Jones or whether it was Stipe. He was training with that in mind. And so in his regard, if he's training for, for that challenge, then Tom should fall in shorter after that. Tom, on the, on the, on the other hand, did roll off the couch um, yeah. almost figuratively here. He, he had mentioned that you know he was doing some, some training and to help other partners, um, but re- was really not in fight shape. What you're saying is totally true, Brad. Tom is a is a, a killer, just like Sergey is. Uh, and you that the submission win over Volkov was, you know, yeah. also very impressive. That was only a couple fights ago. So that's in his repertoire to pull off. I will say though that I do think it is a big difference traveling over here on short notice and getting Sergey anywhere close to plus money would be a, a huge bet for me. Um, you know, at at you know, FanDuel, DraftKings, he's like minus 104, minus 105. But there are some books that have him set plus money. And like you said, that money has been going down. Um, this fight to end the first round, if this was a regular scheduled event, if this was just as we had planned for months and months and both these guys had camps, I would be with you. I don't think this fight gets out of the first round. No. However, <laughs> with fatigue, you know, if, if by chance these guys are feeling it out and it does make it out of one, I could see it just definitely being a hug fest and going all the way if if it does get out of the first couple rounds. But, you know, again, I think that's more of a live bet situation. I think for me right now, I'm definitely taking Sergey Moneyline um, in some fashion or another at, at close to plus money. Um, so even though we disagree, I think our heads are in the right place here with the fight. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think it's one of those two, like, you have to almost separate yourself out of, like, wanting to be a fan of one fighter or another and just go with what makes more sense to you. Um, but I mean, if I get Aspinall at plus price, like I know Sergey is so disgusting. I'm just going to have to pull the trigger. Yeah. Any way you cut it, it's going to be a blast um, yeah. as well. The uh, newly minted main event. Um, this fight was supposed to be the co-man. These guys knew they were fighting each other. Um, I, I, ever since uh, Yuri took out Glover to Sarah, who is a, uh, Training, training partner and friend of Alex Pereira there. So there's a, a little bit of a narrative of bad blood. Yuri kind of poo-pooed on that. Um, but uh, let's listen to Yuri from yesterday and, and hear his thoughts on this upcoming scrap. It's an honor to be here, especially in New York, Madison Square Garden, like a main event. It's an honor for me, especially after a long, tough year. And I believe this fight will be great, and I believe in my winner. Winner. I'm every time trying to find a way where the my opponent will be not expect that. That's the key to win, because it's about to to win in the way that your opponent don't expect that. So you have to see, I don't see somebody like, uh, his, I'm, I'm not watching his techniques, techniques, yeah? And uh, I'm watching his weak points. And there I will attack with the full power. That's why it's my style a little bit risky, but it's a part of, of myself. I need to go there with everything. But I little upgrade my style because Alex is a like top top level stand up guy. So I'm prepared for that. All right, the main event, Brad at MSG. Always exciting, no matter who the names are. Uh, what are you leaning for betting wise in this fight? Yeah, so this was a this one was I didn't want to pick a winner, right? Like I, I'm gonna go back to story time, right? I'd probably say like maybe freshman or sophomore year uh, of wrestling, you know, I, uh, I had a coach and this is uh, high school. I had a coach who, you know, did some time in Japan. I uh, was really big into like that samurai, like soldier mentality. And he kind of put that instilled into me. Like if you see me now, you know, I'm, I'm really digging that. Right. And I, so it makes me really like, really like the vibes that we get from Yuri, right? Like just savage, like embraces everything of a classically trained fighters. What is what I want to say. And, it's going to be fun to watch him fight in this match from a betting perspective, especially saying that I don't know who's going to win this fight. I'm going to have to bet over one and a half rounds. Um, I would always, like I say, shop your lines. I'm um, seeing some minus one fifties out there, but I know there's better prices. If we look at the last, what five fights for Pereira, 
Uh, he only had one fight, and that was a, the fight against Strickland that didn't go at least two rounds. Yuri's uh, last three obviously went um, at least two. I think it was uh, two went two, and then one went three. So I think we're going to see a good quality fight. And these are two really good fighters who know how to grind out fights if they need to. Um, so and, and why that matters and why that's important is all you need to do is make it a fight in three a round and three quarters to cash this bet. I want to hear from you though. I want to know, can you pick a winner or at least someone that you're siding with in this fight? Picking a winner is going to be tough. And Brad, you actually just, I think stole my notes verbatim. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the round over. I do. Um, you know, Pereira is a cold calculated striking killer um, at the media at media day. All of his sound was very locked in as he always was. He, he's not someone that buys into the atmosphere too much doesn't get dragged out into these violent brawls and, and you know, you're not going to see him get into any scraps that he's not willing to get into. I don't think he wants to get this fight to end at, you know, one round because he knows that Yuri Prohaska is, is going to want to scrap. That's his game. If prayer wants to win this, he's going to have to be calculating. He's going to have to play chess here. And it's not in the game plan to end this fight in one round. If prayer is playing chess. So I think, to your point, you know, three out of his last four wins, he's touched the third round. Um, I like you have the round over, you know, you can get around minus 106 for, you know, I think FanDuel had it for for the fight to start at the third round. You can wow. find it in other books, too. So you're just betting for the fight for the third round to begin. Um, I think there's a chance it gets there as far as who's winning this fight. After the Jan Blachowicz fight with Pereira, I think we saw a different version of him at this weight class. I don't really know what to expect. We haven't seen the finishing power there with him at 205 yet. That could be displayed here. He's had a full camp to prepare for Yuri. He's had Yuri on, on the radar. So, you know, maybe that is something in the cards here. I will say that you can get Yuri at plus money, though, here. I, there's, I, yes. I see him at Betway right now at plus 110. I mean, for someone like that that's had that many finishes – um, if you can get, you know, Yeri by knockout, uh, at, at, a, at a pretty good odds, I would bet that, um, but prayer is just so tough to bet against, man. Yeah, I mean, man, what a fun, <laughs> what a fun striker. Um, I would be, I think bet with my bet slip, I'll probably sprinkle some Yeri by KO, but, um, if I had to pick a straight money line here, um, I would feel pretty good about, about Pereira winning this one. I think I could, I, I, I you could convince me to put a Pereira ticket in there. Um, man, I just feel like I have a little bit of like bad blood, uh, with Pereira, especially being an Izzy fan, like Izzy being my favorite fighter, you know how that feels, you know, if your fighter dislikes another fighter, then it just kind of spills over to it. But in, 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 if we want to talk about making money, uh, that makes a lot of sense to bet on Pereira. Yeah. So I guess just to recap, I, I, you know, I'd probably go, um, you know, I, I like the wrap third round to start for this year. fight. That's my main bet. I like Sergey money line. Um, and then if I had to throw another one in there off the, off the main card, uh, Mackenzie Dern against, uh, Jessica Andrade, uh, you know, interesting situation there, both, both having a lot of stuff going outside of their lives. They've had pretty ho-hum, um, records and performances the last few fights, but, um, Dern's looked pretty good on the ground. Um, you know, Andrade has been submitted two of her last three fights. So I could see Mackenzie Dern by submission here at plus 140-ish. So that might be another non-main co-main event fight that I get involved with. Hey, that's that I actually was looking that way too, but I didn't I didn't know how to bet it. I didn't want to lay the minus 200. Um I, I just always have a hard time betting um uh, betting fights um, you know, with specific outcomes. Um, but I would probably bet by by submission there. Yeah, the other thing too that you could do, it's a, a little bit juicier, is you know, Dern's uh, you know, last four fights um have gone to decision. So Dern by decision plus you know 390, which is pretty interesting. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna turn down a plus 390 price, especially especially a plus 390 price that has a lot of track history. Basically, it means we've gone three for three in the last three, and you're telling me I need something that's gonna hit at a 20% rate. Yeah. You're not gonna you're not gonna tell me no on that. I'm not gonna tell you no on that. Well, Brad, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully you can stay up for this one. The the baby won't be keeping you up, or maybe this is her first <laughs> UFC fight. Maybe this it's a nice father daughter bond bonding moment watching. We'll MSG see. Fight. We'll see if she if she's whining to be fed or wanting to get her diaper changed. She's definitely gonna be up watching it. Let mom get some rest. Me and her are gonna be kicked back on the couch watching the pay per view. 
She's going to be whining for you to live bet Ser- Sergei Pavlovich uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, under four rounds. Yeah, that's what that's what the crowds were actually about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks, Brad. Always a pleasure, man. And we'll uh, see you at the next card. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, dude.